constant tension training is mostly bullshit. Here's why. Welcome back, soon to be Dr. Milo Wolf here with Wolf Coaching. Actually talking about the topic of my PhD again today. Constant tension training has been around for a while and has been espoused by many bodybuilding and fitness pros. The general ideas of constant tension training are to keep the tension on the muscle, make the muscle do all the work, skip the part of the range of motion where the muscle isn't working or isn't active, and finally, not to give the muscle any time to rest and many more such explanations. Now, let's go through where this might be correct and where it might actually be incorrect. First up, constant tension has a bit of a point. In fact, shortened positions, the peak contraction or the squeeze, doesn't really seem to add much in terms of hypertrophy. In fact, when you compare doing just shortened partials or just a part of the range of motion where you get the squeeze to doing full reps or to getting just the bottom part, you see substantially less growth. And this was demonstrated in my recent meta-analysis on range of motion. So by avoiding those shortened positions, keeping constant tension on the muscle or doing kind of the middle half to three quarters of the full range of motion, you're avoiding that shortened position that is actually worse for growth. Next, there might be a potential sort of rest pause effect of constant tension training on growth. By not allowing yourself to rest potentially, like for example, when you're leg pressing and you lock out the rep, you might be allowing the quads to rest relative to how much force they have to produce throughout the rest of the rep. And so when you're doing full range of motion leg pressing, you're getting a little bit of rest between each rep. By doing constant tension training, if there is any benefit to avoiding that rest, you might be getting it. We just don't really know yet whether or not that's the case. In all likelihood, it doesn't really matter, but it could turn out that there is some truth to that. Next, there may also be a point to constant tension training or avoiding the fully lengthened position and the fully shortened position when you have some pre-existing pain. There is some research in this study by stealing colleagues, for example, training at either extreme of the range of motion at fully shortened or fully lengthened positions seems to result in greater pain scores in people who already have pre-existing lower back pain. And so avoiding those positions might make for easier training for people who already have injuries that are causing them pain in daily life or during training. Finally, there is actually one study on this topic. It's not directly on this topic because as much as this is a study comparing constant tension training to full range of motion training, the constant tension condition actually kind of trained more so with length and partials rather than constant tension. But it's kind of in between the two. This was, of course, a study by Goto and colleagues. In this study, they compared doing constant tension training or roughly half reps in the middle of the range of motion to doing full range of motion skull crushers. What did they find? Well, they found that the group training with constant tension training, aka roughly half reps in the middle of the full range of motion, saw more tricep growth than the group training with full range of motion consistently. Interestingly, you did see greater amounts of lactate accumulation in the group training with constant tension, which suggests that if there is any benefit to lactate accumulation, and there is some research on that, that's currently not at a very conclusive stage yet. In addition, the constant tension group actually saw greater increases in blood lactate compared to the full range of motion group. And there is some emerging evidence that blood lactate or lactate accumulation within the muscle could cause some hypertrophy. With all that being said though, I don't think this is a very compelling case in favor of constant tension training, to be honest. First off, there's a very good chance that constant tension training is just about as effective as a full range of motion. We have some research comparing length and partials to a full range of motion. And we have a pretty good idea at this point that the reason why length and partials might result in more growth compared to a full range of motion is because it shifts the average muscle length being trained, such that the longer the average muscle length you're training through, the greater hypertrophy response you see. When you're doing constant tension training, the average muscle length being trained doesn't actually change. And so at least on that front, constant tension training should be no better than just doing a full range of motion. To add insult to injury, by avoiding that fully lengthened position when you're doing constant tension training, you are likely making the hypertrophy a bit worse. This is why lengthened partials do appear to be better for hypertrophy than a full range of motion. And so by avoiding that fully lengthened, fully stretched position when you're doing constant tension half reps, you may never be getting quite as much hypertrophy as if you actually went all the way down and still avoided the lockout or still avoided the really shortened position. I actually have 
One cool study I want to bring up. I want you, again, to take this with a bit of a grain of salt because it hasn't been published yet. However, one of the studies in my PhD was a study in the calves. Every participant had their two legs assigned to one of two conditions. One leg was assigned to a full range of motion condition. The other leg was assigned to essentially a constant tension condition where they would perform half reps in the middle of the repetition, avoiding both the fully lengthened position and the fully shortened position. The study was designed this way, number one, to maximize power. When you have participants train their two limbs separately, you can actually maximize the accuracy of your findings simply because then there is less confounding or less noise introduced by differences in diet. After all, both my legs are impacted the same by how much I eat, whether or not I consume enough protein and that sort of stuff. But the second reason why this study was performed and designed the way it was is because it allowed us to compare the effects of full range of motion to partial reps when the average muscle length being trained is the same. So in this case, essentially comparing a full range of motion to constant tension training. What did we find? Well, for the lateral gastroc, for the medial gastroc, and for the soleus, there were essentially no differences in growth between a full range of motion and constant tension training within the calves. And so actually, this is pretty compelling evidence that when you're comparing a full range of motion to constant tension training, you don't really see a difference in growth. And this brings me to my next point. Constant tension is not a hack. It is not magical. It is mostly just preference, and it is likely no better than just a full range of motion. And in fact, if you wanted maximal growth, there's a very good chance that you would achieve this by using some length and partials, or even exclusively length and partials within your training, rather than either constant tension or full range of motion or what have you. That's the video. If you like constant tension training, go ahead. Just be aware that it's probably no better than full range of motion. And if you wanna optimize your growth, as I discussed in this video here, you might wanna consider incorporating some length and partial training into your routine. If you like the video, please like, comment, subscribe, donate, support the grind. It's like 5 p.m., you know, we're always grinding. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.